Welcome to Excel Dynamic Chart Series number 10. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Dynamic Chart Series. Hey, we want to talk about the offset function here, commonly used before Excel 2007, and also we'll see a great use uh, for it even currently. <clears throat> Here's a little data set, and we just want to be able to add data below. As we saw in an earlier video, 2007-2010 Excel table feature will do it automatically. So let's see how to do it with the offset. What does the offset function do? do? Equals offset. Five arguments, and I always have lots of notes uh, about uh, in these workbooks you can download. Reference is the starting position for this range right here, um, date and everything below, I'm always going to start right here. I'm going to hit the F4 key. Comma, row says, from this starting position, do I want to go up or down any? I don't. By default, it's 0, so I'm going to leave it out. Columns, left or right, do I need to move from the starting position? I don't. The default is 0, so I'm going to leave it blank. Comma, the height, we're going to use the count. And the reason why we're using count is because these are uh, serial numbers. Now, lots of books and people go like this. Oh, well, first off, I have a merged center up there, a merged cell up there, so it won't. So you can't, or you just go like this, C colon C. Don't do that. First off, there's a million rows here. Excel can't handle a million rows of data. So just decide the big, the, the last row you'd ever want to go to. For this data set, we're never going to go more than 50. This is m a monthly uh, data, so I'm going to just highlight down to maybe row 60, right? And that's th that's smart Excel there, especially if you have a um, large data set or a, a large um, uh, workbook with lots of formulas and stuff like that. I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it. Right now, it'll just give us one, two, three, four, however tall that is, and that'll be exactly perfect. Comma, but the width by default is one, so I'm going to backspace. We don't need that argument. Close parentheses. Now, this formula in the cell doesn't mean anything. Offset delivers a range. It's actually delivering that whole range. So you use it in uh, formulas or named ranges, which we're is what we're going to do in just a moment. But let's look and see. If I hit highlight that and hit the F9 key, you can see that it's actually looking at all those values right there. If you were to run Formula Evaluator and it was inside of a function, you would see that it actually delivers the range. And then the range delivers these numbers. I'm going to Control-Z. Watch this. I'm going to copy this. I did it in the cells because it's easier to see than the name box. And also, it's you have more. It's easier to create your formula in the cell than it is in the define name dialog box. I'm going to enter this anyway. It's just delivering the first item there. Now we need to name a range because our chart can't use this um, offset function directly. So we're going to have to use a name range to open up name manager or define names in earlier version, control F3. I'm going to say new. I'm going to call it date 1, and then I'm going to come down here and refers to and control V, and then click OK. Now I'm going to test it. Oh, I can already see a problem, but I'm going to click on test. If it's not highlighted in the cell, there is a problem, and this is something that happens occasionally. It puts double quotes in there. It thinks it's text. Ugh, what a silly uh, name manager. I'm just going to get rid of those double quotes. I should have uh, put it into edit mode. This is 2007, so I didn't put it into edit mode, so the only way I can uh, put this in is to click close. It says, do you want to click change, uh, save the changes? I'm going to click yes. Control F3, open it back up. Now watch this. Once you have it here sitting pretty, then you click on this and you can see, in fact, if it's working. And it is. Now we want to do the same thing for our sales range. Watch this. This is a uh, obscure little trick. I'm just going to point to the edge and drag this over, and then point to the edge and drag that over. And there we have our formula for the sales column. Copy, Control F3, New, Sales 1, Edit. I'm going to click right here, Control V. Click OK. 
Uh, it didn't do it this time. Look at that. It didn't put the double quotes. So now when I click here, sure enough. So those are dynamic ranges. And we'll test them in just a moment. If you wanted to test it real quick, you just put anything there, right? Control F3, click on your date, and then click right here, and it better update. So that's how you test it before you go through the hassle of making your chart and stuff. All right, now I'm going to make a now I'm going to go ahead and make my chart first, format it, and then add these those dynamic named ranges. The keyboard shortcut for the default chart, whatever it is, is Alt F1. I'm going to get rid of this right here, delete. Get rid of these lines right there, delete. Get rid of that, delete. I want to format this axis, Control 1, number, and I want to add a custom number format, MMM space year, 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 and then click Add. It looks like I already have, there's one with a comma, but I didn't want just the abbreviation for month and year. Click Close, and sure enough, uh, that is done. How about we Control-1, Fill, I'm going to vary colors, right click, Add Data Labels. Step three in earlier versions. Now I want to format these labels here. Control one, go to number. And I want to do a add a custom number format. And here's what we want to do. Instead of having all these zeros and all these extra, I just want to show like 89k, or in this case, it'll be rounded to a 90k, 50k, etc. So we'll do a custom number format that for that dollar sign pound sign and shift three comma will um, uh, take the last three um, digits off space and K K is the only uh, letter or text you can put in there without putting in double quotes and then click uh, that didn't oh I didn't click add control one. I have to do that again. Dollar sign, pound, comma, space, big K, click Add. Boop. And there it goes. Close. So now we see those in K. That's looking good. I want to make this a little bit smaller. Scoot it off to the side, maybe down a little bit. Just so we can see how this works. Um, now I'm going to click on the chart. And in 2003, you have to go to Step 2 of the wizard and click on the series tab. Here we go design select data. Now we need to edit these and there's an important trick here. I'm going to click edit. There's the series name. That's just the name uh, but here's what we want. Series values. You got to keep that sheet reference right there and highlight all of these range. Hit the delete key very carefully and the keyboard shortcut for paste name is F3. And then this is for the y-axis, which are the values. So I'm going to double click the sales. There it is. Click OK. But watch this. When you go back, click Edit. It puts the whole uh, workbook name in and everything. Sales 1. Click OK. All right, I'm going to click over here, Edit. Do the same thing very carefully. This takes practice. I remember when I learned it, it uh, I messed it up all over the place. And, and occasionally you get errors. And that's why a lot of times it's, I do formulas instead of these um, dynamic ranges. Nevertheless, these dynamic ranges have their place. F3 dates. Click OK. Click OK. So now these should be, uh, this should be dynamic. I'm going to come down here and type. Uh, 9 slash 1 slash 2010 and then uh, 60,000 and sure enough there it pops up right up on the chart. Uh, maybe I wanted to uh, pull this down here like this and say uh, fill with formatting, fill formatting only. That way so I, I have some pre-formatting and then 10 so every month as I add the new data It just pops right up on the chart. Ooh, I put a 2009. Now, there's another type of uh, offset. Sometimes people don't want all the data. They just want the last five months. So I'm going to do a second chart with the second uh, def um, 
offset named function here. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to do my same trick as before. Actually, I'm going to scoop it out, control C, and I'll put it right here. I'll zoom in a little bit. Put this one right here. It's a bad idea to put uh, my way data by a data set like this, but just for this video. Uh, all right, now think about this. Offset, if we want one, two, three, four, five, right? We want to start here and go down that many. Watch this. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if we took the counter as, remember, the starting position is that argument. This one that we left blank because we wanted zero, rows. We can tell it how many rows to add. So right here, we want we need to add five. That'll give it the right starting position. So if you do count minus, um, minus five, I'm going to X on that very carefully in the rows argument. Count all of them and please subtract five. We'll take a look in just a moment. It really will start in position and then that's how many rows to go down. The argument for columns, we're still in the same place. And then uh, height, that's the five. We can leave the width off. By default, it's one. By the way, these fives could be cell references and linked. Then you would have dinette. In fact, we should do that. I'm going to click right there, F4, and I'm going to click right there, and F4. Right now, it'll give us nonsense, 5. And this is going to be uh, last how many, and that will be 5. By the way, if I control shift enter, it will show me show me that, that the value R means it doesn't understand the form of the cells. Highlight, control C, I'm going to escape. And now we're going to do our, our second set of named ranges, control F3, new, um, I actually want to move this one right here properly to the date. and. Um, Oh, I guess this is just the sales. Okay, so I did the sales first. Zip, control C, control F3, new, and this will be sales two. Control V, click OK. I'm going to click this. And did it get the last five? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, it did. Escape. And then I'm going to come back here and do that same trick. Watch this. Scoot this back over here. Scoot this one over here, and we're ready to go for our second date range. Copy, escape, Control F3, new date two, Control V, click OK. Let's verify it. Sure enough, I got that. All right, um, and I'm going to come over here. Watch this. This is a cool trick. I'm going to uh, copy the whole chart. And I'm going to click over here, Control V. And watch this. This will be pretty tricky. Up here in the uh, uh, formula bar, I'm going to get the series function. So I'm going to highlight the chart and then use the arrow key to toggle through the arrow elements. And when I get to this one right here, date one, and it's going to become date two. And sales one is going to be sales two. Enter. And there we have it. So that's a, a dynamic chart uh, with the last five. Now, if I can fit this on the screen, let me scoot this up here. Let's just see if this actually updates. All right? So this is 95K. When I add both these charts should be updating. Here's the last five and here's all of them. So I do 11-1. A 10 here, and then um, 88,700. And sure enough, now these ones update to just show 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's the last one, and this shows all of them. So that's um, a lot of good stuff about offset and about charts and about how they can be pretty ch tricky sometimes uh, to insert that defined named range into a chart. All right, uh, we'll see you next dynamic chart trick.